Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. I'm gonna be completely honest, I do not really enjoy talking about gear like I used to, but we are gonna be talking about a lot of it today. I used to love trying out all the different film cameras I could find, and I would trade and swap and buy and sell all the different cameras I could pretty much all of the time. Especially for this YouTube video, if there's a camera I haven't used and I thought maybe it would be helpful to make a video about the camera for other people, then I would invest in it, try it out, share my thoughts and review on the YouTube channel, and then sell the camera and move on to the next. But because of that, I get questions all the time on like the 500CM, or the RZ67, or Pentax 67, or Yashica Mat 124G, or Roloflex 2.8F. There are so many cameras I've talked about on the channel that I have not owned in years, but I still get people asking about it, so what I thought we would do is just take a look at all of the cameras I currently own right now and just give you kind of short, condensed micro reviews of everything just so we're all caught up because I could sell or trade one of these cameras by the end of the day. I don't know how long this is going to take. There's a lot to get into here. So before we start, I'm going to go ahead and pay some bills and thank our sponsor today, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. There are tons of different class topics to choose from, such as photography, filmmaking, productivity, music production, graphic design, illustration, cooking, anything you can think of, Skillshare has you covered. And this isn't just a platform for beginners. No matter what your field is and what skill level you're at, Skillshare has classes that can benefit you, and it's really for anyone who wants to learn, which should be all of us. One of my most recent classes I've taken is Simple Productivity, How to Accomplish More with Less, and this is taught by Greg McEwen, author of Essentialism. Being a business owner, a father, a husband, I always have a lot of different things on my plate, and Greg's insight has really helped me figure out the best way to use my time effectively and focus on what matters most. If you want to try Skillshare out, there is a link in the description, and the first 500 of my subscribers to click that link will get two months free of their premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Okay, let's just go ahead and jump in. We'll go ahead and start with the Minolta XGM with the 50mm f1.4 Rokor lens. I recently did a video on this. Uh, this is the first camera I ever bought and I learned absolutely everything on this camera. There's definitely some sentimental value, but it's one that I'll never sell just because of that. There are definitely more capable 35mm SLRs, but Minolta XGM, that one will never be sold. The Canon F1N. Now, this is a camera a lot of people have been asking me to do a review on ever since I mentioned picking it up. And honestly, I don't know if I'm going to do a legitimate review on this camera. I did just take it on a hike the other day to Buzzard's Roost and shot some Ilford Ortho Plus, so expect that video soon. But I don't really know that I need to make a review all about this camera because it's not one that I use that often. Honestly, I've thought about selling it multiple times just because although it's really enjoyable, I love the sound, the feel of the camera. It has this nice matte black finish. The 50mm f1.4 SSC that I have is an incredible lens. It's just not one that I use that often, so I feel like it's just going to waste. I've kept it just for the sake of maybe I'll do a video where I want to use a 35mm SLR and a 50mm lens, and this is just a perfect combo for that, but it's just been sitting around, so I don't know that this one will actually be kept, but still, it's a great camera. A 35mm SLR I do want to keep is the Nikon FM2. It's no stranger to myself or this channel. Uh, I've owned multiple over the years. Before I bought my M6, this was like my everyday workhorse. Uh, completely mechanical camera. It does have a light meter, but all of your shutter speeds are entirely mechanical. So even without batteries, it works great and it just works. It's just a workhorse. I have the 35 millimeter F2 AI lens on here. You can focus insanely close with this thing and it pairs nicely with the M6, which I also have a 35 F2 on. The M6 I've owned for seven years now. Uh, I actually have a video coming in a couple of days about this camera. So I'm excited for that. I won't say too much, but M6, this is my everyday favorite camera of all time, and I have the 35 F2 Summicron version 4 on there, which is probably, definitely, my favorite lens I've ever used on my M6. Maybe just any lens ever. Uh, more on that in a couple of days. A couple more 35mm cameras. I have the Nikon L35 AF that my buddy Jared gave me, but I actually haven't gotten anything developed from this yet. I've seen great results from this camera, but I, uh, if I'm shooting 35mm in a compact camera, I usually just grab the Olympus XA, which is not here right now. I left it in the bag mounted to my bike. 
Uh, so it is there, but I still own the XA, still love it. And also when I picked up that camera, the owner, Mez, he also sent this Rolly 35 because he's a YouTube subscriber. Uh, I did a little video kind of talking about that when I picked up the camera, but I haven't shot this camera yet. I do plan on making a video on it. I just haven't had a chance to really go out and test it out, but soon I would like to take this thing out and test it out. It's an insanely compact 35 millimeter camera, so definitely expect one on this. Instant cameras, we have the Polaroid 600 close-up. This was my first Polaroid camera I ever owned. I uh, used it a lot back in high school. I've always loved this thing, and it's just simple plastic. It has a little close-up filter on there, built-in flash. You can hand this to anybody at a cookout or a party, and anybody knows how to use it. Uh, just a simple camera, and I just love the design of it, and it just kind of always takes me back to that time. So uh, yeah, this is another one of my favorites. But my absolute favorite Polaroid camera is the Polaroid SX70. I've talked about this a million times. Uh, one of my favorite cameras in general, but definitely my favorite Polaroid camera. Um, I actually am planning on sending this out very soon to have it modified to be 600 speed, so that way I can shoot a little bit faster shutter speeds, especially indoors. So I'm gonna be sending this out soon to have that modified, and when I get it back, I will make a video uh, kind of testing it out and shooting with 600 speed in it. Medium format, we have a few options. Uh, we have the Holga 120N. I've talked about this camera a million times as well. One of my favorites, and we also have the Diana F that I got from my buddy Ed at the Film Pidea last year. I have yet to shoot this thing though. Uh, anytime I want to grab a plastic toy camera, I just always grab the Holga. I would like to do a video uh, shooting these two side by side just to kind of show the differences a little bit and to try out the Diana. But anytime I want to shoot with a toy camera, I just always grab the Holga. So I don't know when that video will happen, but I've got both of them here. I just need to do it. I do have these two Ondu wooden pinhole cameras. Uh, Ondu sent these out to me to do a video on. This is actually the newer version. It's a 6x6 model, whereas this is an older version, and this is a 6x6, 6x9, or 6x12. Uh, you can actually adjust the frame size on this one. So uh, I've made some photos with these already, and I'm pretty blown away by the results in all honesty, but expect a video on these in the future as well. Now for medium format, we have the Fuji GF670W. Uh, this is actually not mine. I'm borrowing this for about a month from my buddy Dom, uh, basically just to try it out and make a video on it because uh, it's a camera I've always wanted to try. I previously owned the GF670. Uh, this is the wide version, so it doesn't have bellows. It's just a fixed lens. It's a 55 millimeter f4.5. Uh, this is a very interesting camera. You can shoot six by six or six by seven. Uh, I'm not gonna do like a, an in-depth review on this camera because I'm not gonna have it for that long, but I'm gonna take it out, shoot a couple rolls of film, and just share the photos and thoughts on it. So uh, yeah, that one is also on the way. The Mia C330, I did a video on this not that long ago, uh, shooting some portraits with my friend Trent. This is a very capable twin lens reflex camera. I have the 80 millimeter f2.8 on here, but they also have other lenses, which is something you can't usually do on a twin lens reflex camera, but the Mamiya TLRs, you can change the lenses, you have bellows focusing to focus really close, very, very capable camera, and one that people honestly don't give it enough credit. It's incredible. I haven't used it that much lately though, to be completely honest, and that kind of brings us to the Pentax 645N, which is the last camera here to talk about. I just sent money to my friend Chris Visser this morning to purchase this camera. Um, I bought this specifically for a new project I'm about to start, and I feel like it's just a perfect fit. I own this camera years ago. I shot a lot of personal work, a lot of wedding work and portrait work. Uh, it's just a workhorse. I really, really enjoy using it, but I feel like all of the benefits of this camera from the auto advance, the really bright viewfinder, autofocus if I need it or have autofocus lenses for it, and just the lens options as well, uh, and getting more frames per roll, there are a lot of benefits for me using this camera on my next project, which we'll talk about eventually. Um, but I basically bought it just for that, although it's just so fast and convenient to use, I find myself using it all the time. And that's it. Aside from my two EOS R and all of those lenses, uh, when we're talking about film, these are all of the film cameras I currently own. And this could change by the end of the day. Like I said, I don't get too attached to every camera. I have a couple Couple cameras here that I will never sell just for sentimental value but at the end of the day these are all just boxes that let light in to expose film and that's it they're just tools the Pentaxes the Mamiya's the Hasselblad's all of these different cameras I've owned over the years they are great cameras and if I sell a camera that doesn't mean that I don't necessarily have the same feeling about it that I did before
story. It's just their tools, and if they're not getting used, I have no reason to have a bunch of money just sitting there uh, collecting dust. That's why when I buy a camera, I usually sell a camera or two in its place just to one, not have a bunch of money going out for every single camera I pick up, and two, just so those cameras can actually go to somebody who's gonna use them. I'm not a collector, I'm a photographer, and I wanna make sure that my tools are actually getting used, so for me, I used to own cameras uh, probably three to four times this amount at any given time, and that was perfectly normal. Looking at this right now, this is way too much. I want to get rid of so much of this stuff because it's not getting used as much as my M6 or my FM2 or now the 645N. If things are just sitting around not getting used, I want to get rid of them and just clear the space. So this is what I own right now in May 2020. This will absolutely look different in a month from now, and then from that point on, a month after that, then it will look different again. It's always gonna be changing, but this right now is what I have. Moral of the story here, use whatever camera, whatever format, anything that you want to use, stick with that and just make photos. That's gonna do it for today though. If you have any questions or comments about any of this stuff, I'd love to hear it in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a like and subscribe if you're new. We have new videos every Monday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, but that is it for today. So thank you guys for everything. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.